Let's talk to the people, Z. It's time to talk to the people. Yo, this is breaking news. Incident report. It's Tom Heineber, Z Dog MD. I can't believe that uh, that their company is that stupid. These guys honestly. are total idiots. You guys, if you haven't heard by now, um, and Tom is sorry, guys. Thank you. Camera needs to be on me, Tom. Okay, <laughs> we have no idea what we're doing because Logan isn't here. But this morning, when this news about United Airlines dragging off a physician from one of their flights uh, against his will, kicking and screaming, injuring him. Um, we saw the clip and we're like, we got to go live right now and talk about this because this, what was it? What are you saying? The big Lebowski, this aggression will not stand, bro. Uh, you want to play, you want to play the clip for everybody, for Roll, people who haven't seen it? For guys who haven't seen this, this happened on a United Airlines flight from what, Chicago to Louisville or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, this is the situation. Let me tee this up. United had overbooked the flight because they're idiots and that's what airlines do. And they needed to get some of their crew from one airport to another. So they were booting people off the flight. First they offered some money, then they offered some more money, and ultimately they offered $800 for people to volunteer to get off the flight. No one volunteered, so they started picking people. One of the people they picked was a physician who said that he needed to see patients in the morning and he couldn't be booted off the flight, and he bought a ticket and so on and so forth. And so what happened was this. <laughs> So that's pretty bad. That's probably the worst thing I've seen this morning. Uh, how about you, Tom? Anything worse than that? Uh, dude, he was yeah, he was a paying customer. Like, if I was dragged off a flight like that, and my time is not valuable like that guy's time, I would be so mad. And, and let, let's even forget about like the fact that okay, he's a physician, and maybe there's if you're gonna ration who you're gonna boot off the plane, maybe you boot off the kid who like doesn't need to be anywhere, right? but they boot off the doc, right? Right Now, whether that was a nurse or a doc or anybody in healthcare, uh, it's almost irrelevant. The way they take this guy off the plane, this is a paying customer. Now, United reserves the right. By the way, what did, what did you think of their apology? What apology? Oh, what apology? They basically said, yes, there was, we are very sorry for this overbooked situation. Please refer to this to you know, learn more data. Are you kidding me, okay? First of all, and I, and I wanna say this before I even forget, Anything named United that has to do with anything freaking sucks. United Healthcare, worst insurance company on the planet. United Airlines now wins the prize. I thought Delta won the prize after all the disaster they've been having, but United was like, oh, hold my beer. We can make it that much worse. Is this how you treat other human beings, let alone your customers, let alone a physician who said he's going to see patients? z -Pak, what do you think? Did you see how the other customers on that plane behaved? They were like, oh my gosh. They were standing up for him. They were yelling at the police for taking him off the plane. Yeah. Like, I mean, clearly everybody's elephant on that plane was like, F the police at this point, right? And really United, because United had called to have them taken off. When he told, he had told them from what I read that he, what, he said, I'm a doctor, I, I'm, I have to get back to see patients. I can't be taken off this flight. For, plus, I, I fucking paid for this flight. I paid first, for the flight. In the first place. <laughs> Why do you not overbook a, a flight? Yeah, he's not a stowaway. Right. This is not like a criminal, right? But he's treated, did you see how they, and they injured his, he had blood running down his nose or his lip, right? And here's the thing, United offered $800. And then they said, okay, we're not offering anymore. We're just going to kick people off the flight. You freaking idiots. Now look at the damage to your business because ZPAC, I'm going to be the first, maybe the second, I don't know what, right now to call for a boy, a healthcare provider boycott nationally of United. If we can send them a message that you can't treat human beings like that, let alone people who are in the business of helping other people. If that's how you treat us, we're gonna show you how we treat you, okay? And the thing is, I'm flying today, that we're doing this kind of as a rush job because I'm supposed to be on a flight in like a couple hours to Chicago to give talks. And guess what I'm flying, Tom Heinever? 
What do you find? The greatest airline in the universe, Southwest. Yeah. They have always treated me well. They've treated others generally well, and they're flexible, and they're cool, and they're cheap, and that's how you treat customers. Not like United Airlines, which I almost never fly, although I flew them to Newark last week, and it sucked. Screw you, United. Yeah, I mean, they offered $800 for people to get off the plane. Uh, dude, first of all, I mean, how much damage has this caused yeah. monetarily? Right. right. You could have offered ten grand; it would have been cheaper. Right. You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, what and what is it with airlines right now and screwing healthcare practitioners? Right. Remember the African American female doc who responded to a, a call for a doctor on a plane on a Delta flight, and, and the a stewardess was like, "Oh, honey, no, we need an actual doctor." Uh. It's about to get real, Delta, right? It, and, it, and I think, honestly, corporations should be held accountable when they screw up like this. Like, this should hurt them a lot. And if they don't apologize properly, and I think they're afraid they're setting a precedent. Like, yeah. if we apologize for taking this guy off the plane, then we can't overbook flights, and that messes up our business model. Well, that's why I, that's why I like corporations, is because unlike government, you can hold them accountable. You can say, all right, <laughs> screw you, United. I'm going with American. I'm going with Southwest. You're yeah. dead to me. You're dead to me. The thing is, we're supposed to be able to hold government accountable. It just never seems to happen. <laughs> Elizabeth uh, Chicantelli, there's a huge hiring problem in all areas of ethics these days. Well, this is true. Um, Jennifer McCormick, done, nursing student here, graduated in a few weeks. I'm down for a boycott of United. What do you guys think, ZPAC? It's not hard for us to do. It means maybe you fly a connect flight instead of flying a direct maybe you go with American or Delta or Southwest or JetBlue or any of the others but you know what United needs to be held their feet need to be held to the fire for this kind of behavior and they don't understand how powerful we are ZPAC when the healthcare tribe stands up and says hey you screw us we will screw you back times 20 if we're if we're right and we are right on this one plus it's not like United was that great to begin with they already sucked and now they're racist so, <laughs> also, do you think racism was a component of this guy? Why like, did they single out the Asian guy who was clearly sitting in a window seat, right? So, well, so, I mean, I'm going to say, well, it was probably a computer algorithm and they just picked people with the lowest number of frequent flyer miles or who had the least united loyalty or however they right. used the algorithm. But the truth is, it sure comes off as racist AF when you're pulling, like, the one Asian dude off the plane. Now, I don't know. There were other people who were volunteered to get off the plane and they went without a fuss. Um, so it's kind of tough to say, and again, we don't have all the data, so this is an elephant reaction, an unconscious, emotional, intuitive reaction to this, which I think many people feel. The minute you see that clip, you're like, that's hard to... One thing I learned about the elephant over the years, people, he's always right. Always, always right. That's also true. The, 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 the reason is the servant of the passions, not the other way around. So we have to kind of tune up our passions to be on point. And Lonnie says, I'm, I'm with you, Boycott United Airlines. Let's do it. Uh, Karen McLean says, wasn't their tagline, fly the friendly skies? <laughs> unless you're <laughs> an Asian doctor. And, and, then, and then their logo is the guy just with a middle finger. Yeah, unless you're, unless you're an Asian doctor, in which case the, flies are, the, the skies are very unfriendly. Um, as are apparently the aisles, because they were bumping this guy's head as they were pulling him off. And okay, I understand the tough situation. Let's have a moment of compassion for the police officers who had to respond here. Do we think they behaved according to what they have to do when they're told remove somebody from the plane? They, they can't make a judgment as to is it the morally right thing to do. They have to do their job, right? I mean, yeah. what do you think? I think you should reverse racial profile and you should be like, here's a quiet Asian man with glasses. Maybe I'm not gonna beat him in the face. <laughs> No, I think it's fair. I mean, it just shows you that they're not singling out black people or, you know, anybody else. They're like, no, we will clown punch an Asian guy in the face. It doesn't matter. That's true. They're yeah. equal opportunity aggressors against e all humanity. <laughs> they hate all people equally. Are those, were those cops or were those just airline security or whatever? It said police on there, so it makes me think they called... It wasn't, it wasn't United personnel, I don't yeah, think. Yeah, but those would be like air, airport uh, Yeah, cops. probably airport cops, but I think, you know, I think they were police, but we, we can find out. Um, the, uh, Rebecca Warren, this doesn't just hurt United nationally, but internationally. Boycott United. How many followers are not residing in the U.S. that travel there, i.e. Aussies? Rebecca Warren. That's right. Worldwide ZPAC. If you're coming to the U.S., don't fly the unfriendly skies. Fly anything else, at least until we get a legitimate response from United that says, we are sorry not just to this poor doctor and his family and his patients who are now not going to see him in the morning, right? And we don't know the details of this. It may all be lies. I'm going to amend my thing. The cops are dead wrong because I just, I'm thinking about it. They're definitely airport cops and you know that everyone in the airport doesn't have a weapon on them. So this should 
this is different than on the streets. Ah. So there's no reason to be that violent. That's an interesting angle on that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I mean, you know, they literally yank him out of his seat. Now, the question is, does this gentleman have any responsibility for not complying with the orders of police officers? So he's resisting um, uh, an authority figure removing him from the plane, whether or not it was right or wrong. I would have been just like him, dude. Like, I know I paid, you would. I paid for the seat. It's my seat. You're not kicking me off to put your own flight crew on here. I, There's I, no way. I know that's how you would deal with it. Now, what I've always been taught when dealing with police or the popo is comply right away and then contest it later in court, but don't resist on the scene because that's where bad things happen if you want to be safe. And, and so that would be my spin on it is, you know, his behavior was a little... Is there any is there any um, culpability in his behavior? Yeah, but what if he like like he said he needed to get back to see patients? Yeah, he's really he's trying doing to, the morally right thing right. then by sitting his butt on the, on the plane. Fair enough. You know, fair enough. And again, like you said, this isn't a situation where he could possibly have a weapon. This is a situation where he's on a plane, he's been pre-screened, um, and you kind of see what happens. Let's read some comments. Nothing shows him getting hit, so why are we saying the cops hit him? Don, uh, because when they pulled him out, you can hear the passengers saying, you hit his face and you busted his lip, and you can see blood trickling down his nose. So however they removed him, they smacked his head into something on the way out is the, is the, uh, is the conclusion we're coming to. Now, we may be wrong. We may be acting emotionally and intuitively as well, so it's worth asking those questions. Are we wrong? Let's watch it one more time. Let's watch it. <laughs> Yeah, I think they pretty much raked his face over that seat rest, it looked like to me. It, it was, also didn't look like it was very fun to be uh, like, they pulled him over the seat rest and that looked yeah, like it hurt. That looked unpleasant. Those things aren't very bendable. And you know, you can see how upset the other passengers were that everybody had their phone. By the way, what an age we live in now, where in the old days that would have happened and it would have been all like third hand report, like, oh, you wouldn't believe what happened. And now it's like we have 14 different angles on it. And actually there are other Twitter videos and other videos uh, that you can see online where it shows different angles of this thing happening. So you can kind of get a good sense of what's going on. It's like the post Rodney King era where you can pretty much get footage of any uh, kind of action. Susan Robinson says, geez, what if it was a patient flying out to see a specialist the next day? I fly to Mayo, Arizona once a year. Right. I mean, right, yeah, like what if it was? Well, I, I mean, the whole thing is like, they, they need to figure out their overbook situation. They need to figure out how to be compassionate with their employees. Honestly, my feeling is if a flight needs to kick you off, they need to pay you enough money that you volunteer. Yeah. Like, it's their mistake. They need to keep rank, rank. Fuck direction. United. You fuck United, dude. <laughs> I just am rem remembering this story. When I went for my honeymoon, I was five minutes early to the flight, and they kicked me off the flight due, an, due to an overbook situation. This is like 5 a.m. in the morning. I'm going to Hawaii with my wife. And they said, on United, you have to be 10 minutes early to be on time. I said, fuck you, United. No, I don't. That is the most first world problem rant I have ever heard. I was going to my uh, <laughs> Hawaii honeymoon with my wife, uh, and no, uh, dude. I, then I had to I had to spend five hours in the United Lounge at ooh. SFO, which I paid the privilege of an additional oh, you paid the eighty-five bucks, eight, dollars or oh. whatever it was. Oh, you dude. know. Okay, so screw United. I think this has been a step. Now, look, everybody has complaints about every airline. We could have yelled at Delta for the, uh, uh, the way they treated the doctor, the African-American female doctor who uh, uh, was basically completely prejudged, right? So there's a lot of blame on a lot of organizations. The thing is, it's not so much every organization has to be perfect. It's that we need to hold them accountable. And look, guys, we actually have a lot of power. We feel powerless so many times, but the truth is, when something like this happens, we get together as a tribe like we're doing right now and we say, no, no, no. And again, there's subtlety in terms of what was the police's role, what was uh, the patient's, uh, the um, customer's role, et cetera. But the bottom line is we see what's going on and we say, no, this is not how you treat a customer on a plane. It's certainly not how you treat any of the healthcare uh, tribe that are trying to help other people and he's trying to get back. And even regardless of that, that's not how you treat human beings. Um, what do we got here? Uh, 
We fly our three-year-old to Boston from Indiana for her cardiothoracic surgeon. If they pulled this with her, I would be livid, Lori Hensler. I would hope you would be more than livid, Lori, because that is just crazy. United did not apologize for how they treated the man, just the overbooking, Linda Yeager. Yes, that's exactly right, Linda. So what United released a statement saying, we apologize for the overbooked situation. They described the situation and they said, we apologize for the overbooked situation. What a tone deaf. That's about as tone deaf as that Pepsi commercial with freaking Kendall Jenner, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, really? I do have to say, though, that also, you know, it's a tough business that the airlines are in and I get why they overbook and stuff. But if Southwest can run it correctly, why can't United run it correctly? You know what I mean? And I got to say, like, a lot of comments about Southwest being good and, and you know, they, they can screw up, too, and they have screwed up. But they are so good at how they treat people when they need something. Like, I've had to change flights. I've been in serious situations. Southwest has always helped me out. Yeah. And uh, they have a pretty good frequent flyer thing. Now, the problem is you pay the price in that you're in a cattle car. You don't get to choose. You know, it's a boarding thing. And that can be tricky. And the flights are often delayed. But if you're willing to take that stuff, you're going to pay less. You're going to be treated well. And they're just fun sometimes. Like, their steward, their uh, flight attendants are fun. They have a good time. So, you know, it is what it is. Boycott United, hashtag Michelle Johnson. That's right. We started it here. And it's from healthcare people around the world are gonna boycott United. And if we can get our friends who are muggles to boycott United, United is gonna feel the freaking hurt because this is ridiculous, guys. Come on. Uh, Yolanda says they needed the seats for their own United employees. How is this right? Hello? You're an airline. Get another plane to take their United employees or offer your passengers a butt ton of money to make it worth the horrible ordeal of being bumped from a flight. Guys, you make flight arrangements for a reason. You need to be somewhere at a certain time usually. Some people have flexibility, but many don't. And as someone who travels semi-professionally, this is infuriating. If that happened to me, I couldn't even imagine. Of course, it wouldn't happen to me because I'm Z-Dog freaking MD and no one messes with me. <laughs> totally a lie, I get messed with constantly. Yeah, I mean, uh, man, it's, it's just, you can't treat customers like that. Who care? All the other stuff, you know, raises, whatever happened, but like, you just can't treat people like that. Yeah, yeah, you can't. Denise Hader, wait, Southwest also overbooks flights, but they make it right for the customer when they inconvenience the customer. I know I'm a former employee, Denise Hader. That's awesome. Thanks for the perspective, Denise. Southwest is a bomb, says Dina Crump. I know that. Boycott United, Boatwright Wanda. Nonsense. Can't believe they treated a client. Uh, to put their employees on horrid Vanessa Mardson. I mean, that's the bottom line, guys. I think we're pretty pissed off right now. So, you know. What would United have to do to make it right? You know what I think they'd have to do? They'd have to, first of all, apologize directly to this guy, to his family, to his patients. Then they would have to apologize in general and say, we screwed up. We were totally It would have up. to be an out-of-court settlement also. Well, the guy's going to be rich, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um which is fine, but that's irrelevant. It, 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 you know, this is, by the way, trial lawyers are gonna just love, you, how many lawyers are calling this guy right now? Oh my God, yeah. every lawyer in the country. Every lawyer in the country, right? Yeah. After they're done suing the docs, they're gonna actually, they're gonna down they're gonna defend this doc. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> we love lawyers here at Z Dog Industries, we really do. Uh, Tom's dad is a lawyer, um, we love you guys, <laughs> especially the good ones. Um, you know there were probably college students or someone else willing to give up their seats for a free flight or some vouchers to spend in the airport. This was completely unnecessary and avoidable. Carolina Sonner. So Carolina or Carolina, what or Carolina, whatever happened here, they had offered up to eight hundred dollars and no one came forth on the flight to be bumped off. So it, apparently it wasn't enough. Now, in my opinion, they should have just kept escalating the dose. Like when you don't get a dose response, you escalate the dose or you switch to a different drug. Like they should have said, you're gonna get five free flights on United for the rest of the year or whatever right. it is, right? Cami Dickinson says, shouldn't we wait until we know the whole story before we call for a boycott? Really bad optics though. I don't think we need to wait because I, I don't see a way the guy could be in the wrong. Well, but you know, that's been said about a lot of things, right Tom? So I actually, and- Unless it turns out he's like a baby serial killer, I think he's fine. Even then, yeah. Even then, the way they treated him, unless they spingled him out because he was a baby serial killer. And they were like, you know what, get that baby, you know, like some guy at United Central was like, get the baby serial killer off the flight. If that had happened, then that's one thing, but even then. So, but I think she's right about like jumping to conclusions. We'd love to do that. Uh, it's called that shitty first draft, which we've talked about and why it's bad. But here's the thing, guys. Sometimes 
having a good old fashioned intuitive response to visual footage, even when the story becomes clear, is okay when you're dealing with a company's behavior. And in this case, it's kind of like, well, was it really necessary to do this to this guy? Was there another way? Could United have behaved differently? And I think compounded with the fact that they didn't apologize uh, and their, their apology was, oh, we're sorry that it was overbooked. Well, so the dude being dragged off against his will, you're not sorry for? Mario, Mario D'Souza said it was $800 in vouchers. In, oh, so they had to travel on United again. Yes. Okay, see, that's BS. They, they should have either said, look, here's 800 bucks, or do something else. Switch it up. Yeah, you know? for 800 bucks cash, half the people on the plane would have walked off. Totally. Right? Totally. Dude, you, get, you offer me 800 bucks cash, I don't care if it's my kid's wedding that I'm going to miss. I'm taking that money, and I'm going on a spending spree, and I'm going to, I'm going to Sizzler. I'm going to get them scampy, though, because that's what I like. Yeah. Uh, Liz Mongieri, Z-Dog, the details have yet to emerge. Perhaps they would, we would benefit from getting info. Tom, often these clips miss important stuff. Liz, I actually can't argue with you on that, and I agree. The reason we wanted to jump to an incident report live is sometimes it's good to have a quick reaction, and to be honest, more may emerge. Like, it t may turn out that he was some kind of shoe bomber that we didn't know about, and United's holding this back. But shouldn't United say something then? Shouldn't they spell it out right away? instead? Of so part of this is a commentary on their behavior as a corporation. Right. Whatever. Sharpen the pitchforks, peeps. We're going in. This is why we have Tom. He is the id to my super id. <laughs> um, <laughs> David Allen, I think we should wait for the whole story. Sure, it was poorly handled, but do we even know um, he even works in healthcare? Was he purposely putting on a show, the screaming, ragdolling, come on? Well, so there was a lot of regressive behavior, so he kind of went floppy like a ragdoll, which is a typical civil disobedience thing, right, Tom? Oh like, yeah, totally. Yeah, I mean that's how you do it. If that's nonviolent. Nonviolent protest. protest. You yeah. don't. You know, he screamed, which was odd. I think it was because they were hurting him. But were they were they hurting him when they were screaming? We don't know. We can't see because we couldn't see that. Well, if you, it, it looked like he was being dragged into the side of the thing, and that I mean, would, that would hurt. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes Tom will try to shake my hand, and I'll be like, ah! <laughs> I tend to overreact to simple sin. It's allodynia. We talked about it yesterday on Against Medical Advice. By the way. Definitely uh, watch yesterday's show with our pain expert, Dr. Kathy uh, Trevnicek, because she did a great job and you can get CME for it, but that's another pitch. And also, make sure to watch our Jayco, our Jayco parody. Uh, people, by the way, Tom, this is a side note. Yeah, yeah. How many people commented, oh, you know, it's not called Jayco anymore. That was like 12 years ago. It's called the Joint Commission. I don't, I think you guys are missing the point, which is, uh we don't respect them. No, zero respect. So they get called Jayco. I don't care if it was 20 years ago that they changed their name. They want to be called the Joint Commission. They want to be called by the name of a marijuana dispensary. Oh, yeah, no, I'm not fucking doing that. I'm just that's, not doing that. That's what, like when your friend comes up with a, what he thinks is a dope nickname. He's like, yo, from now on, call me T-Bone, dog. I'm not Fred anymore. T-Bone. And I'm like, no, you're Fred because you suck. It's the same with the Joint Commission. Um, let's read some more comments. Considering how long advance I have to book to see my doctor and not a PA or an NP, I would want United to pay me cash, a free flight, and, and then pay me for my appointment when I could get back to see him in three months, uh, Moretta Scott. In other words, how much is our time worth, Moretta? It doesn't matter whether you're a patient or a doctor or a standard human being. What's our time worth, and is United respecting it? And the answer is uh, clearly not from the footage. Are we overreacting? We might be. Let's wet, wait for the story to come out. But that's not going to stop me from overreacting right now, because that's what we do here at Incident Report. That's why it's called Incident Report, snitches. Because there was an, an incident, incident. And we're reporting it. Shazam. Danielle Parnell says, uh, I think it became race-related, even though it didn't start there. They just generally needed a seat in the beginning. But then when it came time to target a single person and make them leave, they racially profiled and targeted. I agree. Take one of the white people. <laughs> I can handle it. Is that a bumper sticker? Next time, take the whites? Take the whites. I like that. You know, just statistically, no one cares if something happens to a white person, really. You know? I'm going to, uh, being off-white, I'm going to stay away from that one, but I'm going to say, I don't think this was racially motivated. That's what I'm going to say. That's my elephant. My elephant says, had nothing to do with that. Had to do with they somehow random computerized algorithmed him. And, uh, you know, it... it you know, you could tell a little bit by his affect. I mean, maybe something about his affect, the way that he just probably flatly refused to leave might have angered uh, either the staff or the, or the police that were removing him. So there might have been some transference there where they were like, 
Sabrina says, at the same time, if a douche is on the plane misbehaving, I absolutely oh. want them removed. Dude. Consider the pressure the airlines face and the threat of terrorism. No, this, and this is a great point, and we've seen this happen, where they pull a douchebag off the plane and, and beat him down. And that's another subject. Now, the question is, here's a question, Tom. This is valid. Hey, could it have been that, and we didn't see the lead up to this, could it have been that this guy was a douchebag? Now, it didn't seem like a douchebag. Let me tell you why I don't think he was. Because the other passengers were sticking up for him. That's why. Yeah. When you see exclusively, you could hear these other passengers going, come on, guys. Oh, good job, police. Oh, leave him alone. You're hurting him. They were sticking up for him. When you watch a douchebag removed from planes with the same cell phone footage, it's always like, yeah, put him in jail. Throw him out, the, you know, throw him out without a parachute. They, people, the mob gets riled up. Oh, know, yeah. For better or for worse. No, I, uh, listen, and if somebody is being a douche on a plane, I kind of want them roughed up, you know? I'm totally okay with that. <laughs> Tom is a big fan of physical violence. He's, uh, you know, some terrible things happened to him as a child. I'm not sure what they are yet, but I'm going to get to the bottom of this Scooby-Doo mystery. Uh, Danielle Parnell, I think it became race-related even though it didn't start there. Oh, no, we read that one already. Let me scroll down. Um, bup, 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 bup. Let's not use the race card. It diminishes the argument, Miguel Orozco. I mean, that's what I think, Miguel, or... Mi yeah, Miguel? Miguel. I say, I say your name wrong every time, and I know you're a, a hardcore Z-packer. Uh, I think it does in this case, because I don't think it had anything to do with that. I think people are spinning it after the fact. You're as funny as I'm the one using it on this show, and I'm, yeah, I'm baby. as white as they come. He's people. Mr. White Privilege. <laughs> <laughs> um, with today's technology, a flight should never be overbooked, and these employees should have planned better. My taxpayer dollars keep this mismanaged company afloat. Federal government should impose fines for United's asshat mentality, Scott Weber. I like where you're coming from, Scott. I can't say that my elephant disagrees with you. Leslie Vance says, the way he was acting, I'm going to guess he was a cardiologist. Oh, let's pick his specialty now. All right, Z-Pack, let's take a poll. Based on the way that this gentleman was acting, and this is entirely judgmental based on crappy footage, what was his specialty, if he was indeed a doctor? Next interesting point, Amy Schindler, they used a randomizer to select who was being forced off the flight after no one volunteered, Amy Schindler. So he won the reverse lottery, in other words, if that's true. Um, ba, 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 ba. Lori Hensler, I bet it had to do with who paid the least for their ticket. They wouldn't want to lose the high payers, Lori Hensler. Hard to know, Lori. We don't know what United's algorithm is. Mary says, I also think that his seatbelt was buckled when they started trying to remove him from the seat, and that's why he was screaming. That, that would be painful. That's possible, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've tried to re remove my child from the plane when their seatbelt was on. I <laughs> never wear my seatbelt on the plane, because if we're going down, people, we're going down, okay? I remember we were, Tom and I were on a flight to Orlando uh, to go to Hims. And uh, we hit some turbulence, and he didn't have a seatbelt on. And I'm like, Tom, you know, they, they want you to put your seatbelt on. And he's like, turbulence is a lie, man. When have you ever heard of anybody dying from turbulence? And I'm like, well, there was this incident in here, and then this other incident, and then this guy broke his neck, and then this happened. He's like, shut up, Z. I'm living my life, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, dude, do, really, do you hear like, oh, today, six passengers died from turbulence. That doesn't happen. <laughs> well, you know. The, plane, the, the entire plane either goes down hey, or it doesn't. I saw the Twilight Zone episode with William Shatner, okay, where he was like, there's something on the wing. That's all I know about turbulence. By the way, here's an interesting comment. Rodrigo Furtado, sticking up for the guy. Sheeple, sticking up for the guy means standing up and act. So uh, there are several things that trigger me in this comment. Number one is the use of the term sheeple, which is an anti-vax term. Second of all, I do like standing up and acting. Although, could you imagine, like if I was on that plane, I would be talking hella shit, but I would not be getting up to try to protect the guy because these are police officers and I got somewhere to be. Okay, Sea Dog needs to land and get to whatever gig or family thing he's got to get to. So, Have you pure watched, selfishness. You saw Dave Chappelle's new stand up, right? Where yep. he goes, My friend got pulled over for drunk driving. I thought, what anybody would think in this situation? Oh my God, what is going to happen to me? <laughs> That's exactly right. It's, it's about good. selfishness, people, and compassion and love. Um, Annie Prepelita, according to the morning news, the guy was picked randomly because no one volunteered for 800, right? So that's the understanding as I have as a kind of a random selection. So let's take race, I think, off the table here, which I don't think it ever, in my mind, it was never on, although people have been in comments on other news outlets, they've been saying, oh, it was because he was Asian, it was flying while Asian, FWA, and this and that, which is nonsense, I think, um, unless there's some implicit bias that I'm, that I'm missing, and, you know, who knows. United is horrible, says Lynette Hazard. We've had so many business trips and they're running hours where they are running hours late uh, with zero explanation 
Once after we were all boarded, we were stuck for over an hour on the tarmac, and then they decided to start the flight. The captain says the reason, a bird had flown in our engine. I wanted to get off and take a new flight. We don't fly United anymore. I mean, and honestly, Lynette, this isn't unique to United. This is just the airline industry. It's a tough industry, actually. It's hard. We should have some compassion for trying to run what effectively is better run than the healthcare system. So people get from one end to another as usually as efficiently as possible. There's obviously glitches. It's an incredibly complex system, but they do it a lot better than the healthcare system does what we do, which is we have a non-system. So I got to give some props to the airline industry and, and, and represent for them. Z, uh, some, some new people are coming in. Can I play the clip one more time? Play the clip one more time. Shazam. That's a tough one to watch, guys. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. What I what I don't know. Just give me your pure elephant. My unconscious emotional reaction to this is somebody done screwed up really bad and treated another human being poorly with no real good reason. And that if we were fixing this problem, it would be a systemic fix to the way United chooses people to get off planes and also how the uh, airline security respond to people who are not aggressively behaving like douchebags. Although, we, again, we have no evidence that he wasn't, except for that the passengers were verbally sticking up for him. Um, so they were there you know, with him. And I think a lot of people at that time, probably on the flight, were empathizing, true empathy, putting themselves in his position. What if I were pulled forcibly off this flight? What if I, ne I need to be somewhere tomorrow? What if this happened to me and they were then acting from that uh, empathic place? And we had our, our piece on empathy versus compassion. And I think in this case, a little empathy allows us to kind of understand what it might be like to be in his shoes. It's much harder to empathize with a big corporation with protocols and policies because it's an abstraction and we talked about how hard that is. But I think it's reasonable to say we need to do something on a systemic level to prevent this kind of thing from happening again. That's my take. Now, the boycott United thing, I think we should boycott United until, until they give us an amazing explanation that makes us all happy that this guy was a total douche and he deserved it or they apologize and completely fess up to what has happened here, which is a horrible sort of event. Either way, we need some degree of satisfaction that this, that this is not, that, that they're gonna do something about this or that they acknowledge that something went wrong here. Otherwise, how can you fly with them? It's really not okay, because that's how they're gonna potentially treat you. I don't know, what do you think, Tom Heineber? Oscar Vela says, that man just hit the lotto. I would let someone drag me for the opportunity to have United Airlines by the balls. <laughs> Hell, I'd probably take a punch or two. I'm sure he will be able to retire and pay off student loans, mortgages with that settlement. You know, really, honestly, I'm jealous AF right now. Cause like, I fly enough, they never try to kick me off the plane. If it happened, I would go limp like a rag doll, scream like a girl, and uh, be dragged off the plane if it would get me $2 million. By the way, I'm not saying he was screaming like a girl, but um, I would scream like a girl. And I'm not saying girls scream like girls. See, now I'm digging myself into a misogynist, pile of feces, Tom Heineber, and I don't even know what to do. By the way, did you hit record on this? Uh, pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Oh, wait. wait oh, yeah. Let's the see the buttocks again. Go ahead. There they are. Oh, man. <laughs> that gentleman's like, why was there a butt in my face? The guy with the orange? <laughs> exactly. By the way, for the people watching on the, listening on the podcast right now, um, I'm going to be on the road a couple days uh, this week. Actually, many days this week, so we're going to be doing the podcast from the road. Tom Heineber and the gang will be back next week. Um... Cool. Well, you, you want to wrap up, Zane? I think we should wrap because I think we've gotten people riled up enough. We're going to find out more. We'll follow up on this. I'm on a flight today at noon Pacific to Chicago. So uh, speaking for uh, AMA and the American Immunization Registry um, tomorrow morning in Chicago, that's going to be fun. Uh, so hopefully I can get, um, my goal is to get maced on a flight, uh, get it on film, become an international incident, and lead to a hashtag that I just present here for you called Boycott United. However, I'm flying Southwest and they are awesome AF. On that note, ZPAC, thank you for joining this Incident Report live breaking news. Please come check out our podcast, rate and subscribe. It helps us a lot. And I don't know, we out?
and we out fools. But I don't have an outro because Logan's not here, so just do 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 do. That was terrible. I'm so sorry. Da 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 da